Good morning, everybody. It's lovely to see you all, um, especially on this uh, chilly, uh, frosty morning. Uh, before we begin our carol service, I would just uh, like to say um, you will observe uh, some Christmas trees here. Um, those of you that haven't been over the last four days or that are watching online, um, just a little word of explanation. Each group in the church took a tree and dressed it uh, to illustrate. And then obviously there was a bit of fun that you had to guess what the carols were. So if you want to join in and do that, the papers and pencils are there. Uh, there was a small prize, um, but I just wanted to say thank you um, to everybody that uh, took part and, and went with the idea and had some great imagination and great ideas. And uh, I hope that you had a bit of fun while uh, you did it. And uh, lots of people that came to things over the last few days have uh, commented. It also makes a great backdrop for our, our carol service. The tree over there on the far uh, left is slightly different. It's the Memory Lane Cafe tree, and we didn't uh, decorate a tree, but I asked the people that came to uh, write their Christmas memories. So if you want to have a little look at some of the Christmas memories they wrote down, do that after the service while you're munching your uh, chocolate mince pies and everything else. Um, let's just open uh, our service this morning in prayer. In our times of darkness, you're our light, Jesus. In our times of loneliness, you walk beside us. And when we experience loss, you share our pain. In our times of emptiness, you fill us. In our times of brokenness, you hold us together. In our despair and delight, in our joy and sorrow, when we have faith and when we doubt, you are always with us. God with us. We thank you that you're with us now and we ask that you would be the center of our worship as we praise you in word and song today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand to sing our first carol, Angels, from the realms of glory.
Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, 6, and 7. The people who walked in darkness will see a great light. For those who, who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and his peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the so start again, from the throne of his ancestors, David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven armies will make him will make this happen. reading is from prophet Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 to 5 comfort comfort my people says your God speak tenderly to Jerusalem tell her that her days are, her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned yes the Lord has punished her twice for all her sins listen there's a voice shouting Clear a way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Fill the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed 
and all the people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. reading is from Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 35. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favoured woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. And then the angel left.
Lord God, we come before you this morning with thankful hearts for the privilege of being able to meet together at this Christmas time to praise and worship you and celebrate your birth. We thank you that you came and lived as a man, experiencing life on earth, and that you understand everything about us and the ups and downs that we all face. We're so grateful that you love and care about each and every one of us and you're always there to comfort and guide us in every aspect of our lives. We pray for those in our fellowship who are not able to join us this morning. For those who are ill, we ask for healing. For those who are down, we pray that you'll uplift them, Lord. For those who are travelling away from home, keep them safe, we pray. We pray too for those who are in this local community, Father, that don't know you. We know that so many people are struggling with the pressures of everyday life, worrying about finances, health, work and family. So many are seeking the comfort and security that only you can bring. So we pray that people will be drawn to this place and that they will feel your presence here. We thank you for all the work that goes on in this church, Father. All the organisations such as the Friendship Meal, the Places of Welcome, Girls' Brigade and all the others. We thank you for those people who are giving up their time to organise and help with these groups. Give them strength and encouragement to keep working together, Father, even when sometimes they feel frustrated or discouraged, because we know how important it is to be a beacon of light and love in this community. We pray for those in government who continue to try to negotiate our country through the most trying and difficult circumstances that we as a nation have faced in a long time. We know that people are angry and they're frustrated and even desperate in some cases. Our NHS is at breaking point and the strike action being taken by all the different services threatens stability and the safety of many people. The consequences and the impact of these strikes are far reaching and we ask therefore that you will guide those charged with leading the country in the right direction to make the right decisions in order to resolve these issues and restore some stability at this unsettling time. We pray too for those who are grieving and distraught at this time, Father. We think particularly of those who have lost loved ones in the Jersey explosion, of the parents and the families of the little boys who lost their lives last week in Solihull in such tragic circumstances. For the families of those who perished trying to cross the channel, O oh Lord. So many tragedies causing tremendous pain and grief for so many people. Comfort them, O oh Lord, and let them feel your presence and peace. We continue to remember those who are enduring the ongoing horrors of war in Ukraine and in other parts of the world. We pray particularly for our Christian brothers and sisters in these places, trying to help people in their time of need and show your love and kindness. Just let them feel your power and presence, Lord. Give them your assurance that you're there to support and guide them through this scary and uncertain time. It's so hard to see how or when these wars will end, but we know that you're in control, Father. And we know that we need not be afraid because you're a just and mighty God, and we can rest in the knowledge that no matter what we face, you will never leave us or forsake us, and in that promise we can trust. Just hear our prayers now we ask, in the blessed name of our Lord Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our fourth reading this morning is Joseph's Annunciation, and this is found in Matthew chapter 1, and we're reading on from verse 18. This is how Jesus and the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Mary. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As she considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, 
the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through the prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. Amen. reading is the birth of Jesus taken from Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 7. At that time the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census and because Joseph was a descendant of King David he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. So he travelled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. I suppose about now you're doing your Christmas shopping uh, and it's great, isn't it, when you just get exactly the right gift. That look of wonder and joy when somebody opens it up and they go, wow, just what I always wanted. Today's carol is the carol See Amid the Winter's Snow. 
born for us on earth below. See the tender lamb appears, promised from eternal years. And Jesus is just that. He's the fulfilment of God's promises throughout history, going way back to the beginning of creation, when uh, Adam and Eve first sinned in the garden and God made a promise of a saviour. And one by one, over the years, the promises have been fulfilled. And around the birth of Jesus, so many of them came to pass. When God sent Jesus, he nailed it. He's just what we need. The gift that keeps on giving. The, the gift that is for you, if you'll just receive him. with one's first child. Every mother is acquainted. Worry. When one is young, one prays. When one becomes a mother, one burns the midnight oil. You know what I speak of. Back. 
my hip. Gifts from my first child. Mary was such an easy child. And then she met this quiet carpenter. Nice enough young man. Though her father and I worried if he could provide. That soon became the least of our worries. She, uh, she came to me quietly one morning talking of angels and God and trying to explain this child that she had conceived. Mind you, every Jewish girl's dream is to be chosen to give birth to the one. Yet I could hardly bear to listen. It's one thing to conceive out of wedlock, but this story. How could she lie to her own mother? What have you done? What have you done? I said to her over and over. I screamed. Words that haunt me every day. This, this is how I greeted the long-awaited savior of our people. But when I finally understood, when I finally believed, An ecstasy spilled out of me. Had it been there this whole time? I was to be the grandmother of the Messiah. I don't know what I expected after that. Perhaps a more suitable birth plan for a king and his mother. But what do I know? I know this. The very first thing I said to my sweet Mary was, what have you done? Such a useless question. What I should have said was, let's see what God can do. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Look what God has done. Our sixth reading is found in Luke chapter 2, 8 to 14. That night there were shepherds staying in a field nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news, I will bring great joy to all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem the city of David, and you'll recognize him by this sign. you find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God is peace.
our prideful race crowns us with forgiveness for Luke chapter 2, verses 15 to 20. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see these things that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby, laying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone, what has happened and what the angels had said to them about this child. And all who heard the shepherd's story was astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as angels had told them. reading is from Matthew 2 verses 1 to 12. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem 
asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, For this is what the prophet wrote, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the first star appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I too can go and worship him. After this interview, the wise men went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod.
next reading is from uh, Matthew 2, uh, chapter, verses 13 to 15 and 19 to 21. After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, that night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, I called my son out of Egypt. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up, take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. Word was first, the Word present to God, God present to the Word. The Word was God, in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through Him. Nothing, not one thing came into being without Him. What came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out in the darkness, and the darkness couldn't put it out. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighbourhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one-of-a-kind glory, like father, like son. Generous, inside and out. True, from start to finish.
the final prayer. Um, and if you're hoping to join us personally here in church on Christmas morning, Ian's going to be asking you about your favourite Christmas memories, so bring them along. Lord, we thank you for everything that you do for us. And as we prepare for Christmas, we praise you for the joy Jesus brings. We thank you for the love, the mercy and the forgiveness that came to earth as a baby. We praise you for the Christmas message and the hope it leaves with us. May we share your joy and your mercy and your love with those who we meet in this next coming week. Because we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen.